Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Gibbon, your host, and uh, my good friend, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. Yeah. It's good to see um, you, too. Man, I had, had a, had a, I just mentioned earlier, we had a death this morning of our saint, and so I uh, got to see this precious, precious saint yesterday and to be able to pray with her and sing Psalm 23, and we commended her last night unto the Lord and got a phone call that she uh, fell asleep in Jesus this morning, so it's a, it's a, Anytime you have a death of a saint, it's a sobering moment for a pastor, a sobering moment for the church. You know, it it keeps the focus on what's really important, right? What's what right. we're here for. Yeah. And and where we are in the church here kind of speaks to it right now. We're as we record this in the middle of Advent and and the prayer, you know, from that room, come Lord Jesus, just really matters that that much more. Um, I, I think that in the midst of everything that sort of gets lopped into the extra stuff that comes in it's healthy for us to to be with our our people as as these things are going on um it it, it focuses us um it, we were talking before we recorded um it, it seems like there's a couple times a year that the lutheran internet just always wants to sort of blow up and fight about stuff it is right in the middle of the, the beginning of advent and lent um and you know i said that the devil hates Easter, the devil hates Christmas, the devil hates these places where Christ carves out the victory and so he stirs the pot. And also, maybe pastors are a little intimidated by how much extra work we have to do, so we just try and distract ourselves by picking fights on the internet. Um, <laughs> and and as always you you gave me you gave me the word of God and and, and hope. So where do we where do we go uh, for the role of the pastor when it comes to podcasts and blogs and posts and all of this? What should your pastor be doing? Well, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, as we were talking earlier and just contemplating this whole subject, uh, just brought to John chapter 21, that encounter between Peter and Jesus. And mm-hmm. it, just to read briefly, uh, he says, uh, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And uh, John, or, uh, excuse me, Peter goes on to say, uh, yes, Lord, I love you. Uh, and then Jesus responds, what? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Yeah. And. You know, I've I've had this conversation here the last couple of days with with a couple other pastors. We're talking about things and so forth, and and I think it 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 always comes down uh, for the pastor, for the disciples, uh, to feed the sheep, to minister to the sheep. And in fact, if you think about this, looking back to the book of Ezekiel, I believe it's Ezekiel talks about the false shepherds. The false shepherds they're actually using the sheep, uh, you know, taking the wool of the sheep, um, uh, eating the sheep, and killing them and slaughtering them, and everything that they're doing, they're, they're deriving from the sheep for unto themselves. And so, the sheep are just pawns uh, for their own use of of their own financial and uh, mental and physical benefit. And this, that's the definition of a false, a false shepherd, because when the wolf comes, the sheep mean nothing. So then the false shepherd, he what runs at the sign of the first sign of the wolves. Yet we look here of what uh, Jesus is saying in the book of John to Peter. Uh, if we love Jesus, uh, feed the sheep. And that's the downward trajectory of the pastor is downward towards the sheep. And, you know, we, we've covered this before and, and it's, and I'll be very honest, as a pastor, to get a phone call to go into a hospital when a person's dying, um, nobody jumps for joy on that. And even family members don't don't want that news. And yet, when you come into that situation uh, to feed the sheep who are hurt, suffering, you know, dying, and how do you feed them? You know, we don't we don't feed them by saying, "Hey, clap your hands, be ha- clap clap your hands, be happy. Everything's you know fantastic. You know, here's here's a latte." Uh, no, we 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 give them the gospel. We give them Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, because that's that's the main thing. That's what we need uh, day in and day out. Now, obviously, there's that doesn't mean that the exclusion of the law. You know that we need the law to reveal our sin, uh, to show us what's godly and true, uh, to to curb this old Adam, uh, to to reveal the false ideologies of the world that can lead us astray. Um, but at the end of the day, um, as sin sick sinners, we need. Jesus. Right. I, I think that the, the danger always sort of lies in trying to to set true doctrine almost against the work of Jesus. And, and nobody would say it out loud, but nobody's, I was right on this third wade into the resurrection. And when this the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh attack us, uh, it, it's not a question of, do you know the right answer? But are you receiving Jesus? Is Jesus feeding you? And he does that through your pastor. Um, and so I, I know the catechism 
sort of well. Uh, we, we've been doing this a little while, you and me, but we both still, I have a pastor that I go to with my sins. I, I have a pastor that I go to with my my weaknesses. Um, and my pastor's job it is to teach me the doctrine that, that points to hope. But you actually need to, to be receiving it. Uh, I, I think there's a difference between knowing a thing and receiving a thing. Most of what we teach our people is not new to them. Like I, I, we, we, we tell them Jesus died for them and, and they should have already heard this by now. If you're with me for more than a week, you will know that Jesus died for you, but I'm going to tell you as often as I can because that, that's all we have. Yeah, you know, Martin Luther uh, in this, this uh, old book, uh, I think the title was Against the Heavenly Prophets. And... Uh, and he says basically, uh, you know, if you want forgiveness and you want to hear about the forgiveness of sins, uh, we don't travel back to the cross. We won't find it there. Uh, for at the cross is where forgiveness was accomplished, uh, where it was achieved. And then he said, if you want to have the forgiveness of sins, where do you go? You go to what? To your baptism, to the word of God spoken into your ears, to that supper laid upon your tongue and poured down your tongue into your belly. And so this whole idea of, of, of objectively knowing and hearing about the good news of what was accomplished for us and achieved in 32 AD. Gosh, we need to hear that. We need to hear how Jesus stepped into the dirty waters of the Jordan to identify with sinners. Uh, we need to hear how on his own accord, he went to that cross uh, for you and for me because he was not uh, going to hold back from the mission of what accomplishing salvation for humankind, not with you know gold or silver, but with his precious holy blood. And so we need to hear all of that uh, but then we need to hear, and this is the whole point of feeding the sheep, the pastor then has that great privilege of going to the sheep and say, you know, so I'm sorry, going to get teared up, but, you know, Sally, <laughs> yeah. uh, Sally who passed away this morning, you know, Sally, this is for you, you know, Sally, this, this Jesus, this accomplished forgiveness is for you, dear sister, dear child, uh, that you're baptized into Christ, that you belong to Jesus, to put the sign of the cross on her head. And her heart and saying that uh you know death is embarking upon you but guess what the son of god is not going to let you out of his grasp he holds you in life and in death and so that's the feeding of the sheep is taking that which is accomplished and that's the joy of the pastor uh to be a simple servant and to deliver you know i've often said this before and i kind of love this illustration and and i've seen this elsewhere on uh, social media uh the, the minions right remember uh oh yeah what, is it, was it, I always get mixed up. It's, it's Groot. No, that's not Groot. It's Groot. That's, that's the Sanders. Yeah. Or Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. Groot is the Avengers guy, but Groot is that guy and he has all these little yellow minions, right? Yeah, and yeah. they're all like, ta-da, right? And so this, there's a picture of a yellow minion and he's got a little clergy collar on. Somebody saw that the other day. And that's, that's really what a pastor is. He's a minion for Christ and a minion just what <laughs> is an insignificant just, minion who yeah. just does what the master calls him to do. And what does the master call us to you know, calls us to do, feed the sheep, deliver mm -hmm. the gospel, pronounce the forgiveness of sins, uh, to go into death, to go into what the hospital bed, uh, to come to the houses, to step in the pulpit, uh, to stand at the font, to stand at the rail and to proclaim Christ, uh, for sin sick people who need the hope of Christ. I, um, I heard Pastor Wolf Mueller once tell me that uh, there's a reason they dress you up the same as the table, um, that, that your pastor in church wears the same vestments as the altar. And it's because the, the table actually doesn't matter that much. It's what's on it. We, we, we hide the table underneath this and you're no more important, um, which is, is a really, really good gift. And it lets us sort of confront all the little things that you might, uh, if you've watched your pastor social media account and never been a little uncomfortable with how he's behaved there, um, if, if, if he's argued about things that, that you've kind of struggled to, to see the point in um, or, or, or things that you've just been a little concerned about. There's always the temptation to sort of say, well, if you have Jesus, the rest doesn't matter. And that's not true. But all of those other doctrines, every other truth, it should be driving towards that cross because the table is really only good for one thing. It gives, it holds up communion. And, and quite frankly, your pastor is really only good for one thing too. He feeds the sheep. He he pronounces the forgiveness of sins. He, he gives you the sacraments. Um, and everything else that is done should be driving towards one of those things. And if it stops before that, it, it's it's failed. Like it, it's like trying to play poker on the altar. Like it, it that's not what it's for. And, and I'm glad you've got some stuff on the table, but but it's for a lot more important things. Yeah. Well, and it, it's, it's, it's again, like that downward trajectory, you know, of, you know, and I think you, you brought up a really good point here earlier, as far as doctrine, uh, doctrine is wonderful. And I guess we, we got to be careful indeed not to pit doctrine against, you know, the other, 
Uh, but that doctrine, you know, Jesus says the truth will set you free. Good doctrine is to be delivered to the saints, to the sheep, so that they would have freedom uh, and a free conscience to know what is right and what is wrong, to know what reality is. Um, you know, it, it, Paul says this over and over and over, and I'm, I'm so drawn to this as the epistles. He's always talking about being sober-minded, uh, to be awake and to, to be alert. And, and quite frankly, uh, in this world, apart from Christ, uh, we are, well, zombies, sleepwalking. You know, where, where people are, are sleepwalking and just going through the drum of life. Uh, but the Word of God does stuff to us. The Word of God uh, enlightens us. The Word of God imparts to us what is true, what is reality, that it is Christ, uh, the, the great one who is the, the great, as, as, as we say in the first of the Gospel of John, chapter 1, the great Logos, the, 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 the great one who has what knit us together in our wombs and has what created the cosmos, uh, created all things, the one who's going to restore all things. And to have good doctrine then imparts to us right understanding, uh, a clear mind, a clean conscience, the assurance of the gospel, all these things. And so again, the doctrine uh, is for the sheep to be fed to the sheep. And so it, it all goes towards Christ's church. And right, I mean, that comes back to that analogy of what the, the bridegroom and the, and, and the, and the, the bride, right? Uh, this whole idea that Christ is going to be the bridegroom and he what protects his church uh, in the feminine. The, the feminine church receives all good things from the groom who what bleeds and dies for her. Absolutely, and when when you have this thing at the at the end of it, um, it, it, it focuses all the other stuff. It, it, it really does. There there now becomes a, a point to when we we talk about you know is this enough? It, when we a point to so many of the other things that that just sort of become our everything, especially in social media when you're sort of a step away from that hospital room where there actually is somebody who just needs Jesus. Um, it my call is to it to hire things, which means, um, I'm in a weird position where I, I don't preach from my own pulpit anymore. Um, on a regular basis, I, I get to do stuff like this. I go to my church and I hear my pastor preach to me when I'm not out with, with higher things doing other stuff. But, um, it, it's also been a, a really great blessing for me because at the end of the day, my pastor will make sure that, that the thing that I hear is that there's Jesus for me. Um, and it, it sort of, changes how we get to look at the rest of the stuff that happens on the internet uh because now it's 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 if it's either pointing to your own congregation to to help out or it, it's every bit as silly as every other thing that's on the internet and you don't have to lose sleep over it you don't have to fight with people over it and if you see people sort of struggling with that it, it gets to be a, a good chance to redirect yourself is this a place that is edifying and building up or is that your own altar where you're receiving jesus is is this actually a place that is it's pointing to where the gifts are given or or pointing to something else and and maybe that's how we should be looking through this i don't know yeah yeah no and i think it comes back to john 21 feed my sheep right yeah. And uh, uh, it is. I mean, uh, uh, you think about the blessing of the pastor, the and the opportunity of the pastor to deliver, uh, to deliver, to li- deliver the goods, deliver the forgiveness of sins, uh, to always center us in Jesus, and not only for the congregation but for the pastor himself to be centered. And you mentioned this earlier about having a pastor, and it's it's a wonderful blessing for pastors to have pastors to them, so that we're all what. Uh, gathered into the oneness of Christ. There's one baptism, one hope, one assurance, uh, one table, one pulpit. It's all Christ for us. And so all roads lead back to Jesus and uh, Mm -hmm. that assurance. And that's really the theme here of coming up here uh, with Advent. Uh, We're going to deal a little bit with John the Baptist, and he's making everything level, right? Preparing us what? For who? For himself? No, for Christ. Yeah. Pastor, thanks so much for pointing to Jesus. Hey, sounds good. Good to see you, Harrison. Take care.